This is Line Talkers Podcast, Episode 2, Hurricanes, and some other stuff. We're back for episode two, and if you guys listened to the first episode, I had two awesome ladies on there, Line Wives, Pam and Kim, and so today I've invited Kim back to help me do the show. Kim and I have uh, known each other for quite a while, from some time that I spent in California, and so I've invited her back to help me uh, talk a little bit about things this week. Hi guys, I'm so glad to be back here to visit. Thanks for asking me, Kenny. Yeah, what I, I didn't really ask you, I, I, I think I kind of <laughs> told you. You might have. <laughs> the last show that we did, Kim, or the, our first episode, we honestly, I'm overwhelmed, and it's just beyond comprehension the number of downloads, the response that we got from the community of line wives, line workers, folks in the utility business. You, you know, I, I could just say one thing. If you're listening to this episode two right now and you haven't listened to the first one, you need to. So I know, Kim, you got some responses as well from, from I different did. folks. Do you have the, Yeah. And it was all pretty positive, and it was really neat because I got messages both from the guys and the wives, and so it's cool that we're able to reach both ends of the spectrum in this industry, so that made me really excited. Yeah, so so be honest, did and, and I know I'm back in Tennessee. I spent some time in California. So so did they, did anybody say anything about me sounding like a hick, hillbilly, oaky? I mean, <laughs> you know what? I was surprised, but no one said anything about it. <laughs> so you're surprised because I do sound like that, uh, or just a little bit? That, I don't know. I probably okay. sound like okay. I have a weird All accent right. to you. I got made fun of this week by one of my employees because I said the word antenna incorrectly. So I'm used to it. The time I spent in California, all my friends there at the utility in California, I didn't know it until the day I left. They all told me that my nickname was a little bit of country. They said that behind my back the whole time I was there. As far as the feedback, overwhelming response. There's a lot of folks in this business, honestly, that I was not even aware that were so dialed in to the Instagram and the the website, Facebook page, Snapchat, and Twitter. I never, I mean, I, I'm a Facebook freak. You and I are friends on Facebook. I follow Facebook all the time. I have not mastered the Instagram nor the Twitter. I mean, what do you tweet? I mean, I, I don't, I, I struggle with that. But but the response has just been overwhelming. And so, yeah, I, I, again, I love it. I've, yeah, I've gotten a lot of messages through Facebook. I've gotten a lot of messages through Instagram. And I feel like Instagram is so much more low key compared to Facebook. You know, like there's just, there just doesn't seem to be as much drama. So I kind of prefer Instagram over when I'm listening to people do their videos on Facebook because, you know, they always like post a lot of stuff like that. It just, Sometimes there's just a lot of ranting, and when I'm wanting to relax, that's when I go to social media, and I don't want to listen to that, so I always try to look for happy things, and I feel like on Instagram, there's more of those types of things. People are celebrating their highs and then posting pictures and where they're traveling to and the good things that are going on in their lives, and so for me, that's kind of like a pick-me-up, so I tend to go to Instagram more, and then I do Twitter just for all my news for our fire updates and weather updates and all of the hurricane stuff going on, so that's more of my news deal that I follow. For those who are listening, if you have any feedback for us for the show, I will tell you that Kim's going to be around for a while. She keeps me in line. I am a procrastinator. I have <laughs> procrastinated this project, this show, for about three and a half years. I mentioned it to Kim, and within a month, I had a recording, and then here we are. 
I know that you brought this up a long time ago, like just between you and I, it's been almost a year since you started talking about it. And if you've been thinking about it for three years, I wish you had done it sooner because I think this is going to be really special. Yeah. Thanks for making me feel guilty about waiting so <laughs> long. But if you've listened to the first episode and you have some feedback for us, so I have a website. It's not fancy. There's not a lot on there. It's uh, liontalkerspodcast.com. The couple episodes at the top. Right below that is a bottom that says record to leave a voice message. If you leave, uh, press the button. I think you'll be asked for your name and your email. That just allows us to be able to respond back to you. Leave a message. We'll play some of those on uh, future episodes. And it just gives us a method to be able to uh, communicate with everybody. So Yeah, uh, I love uh, that. Uh, it's like it's like personal interaction. And I was playing around with it a couple weeks ago. And I just have to think how cool it is that Everyone from all over, wherever you are, whatever country you're in or whatever state you're in, can just talk straight to us. And then we're able to broadcast that, if that's what they want, to share messages to everybody. And and not just people who are in the industry, you know, people who are affected by it are also welcome to call and or leave a message and stuff, too, because we want to hear from everybody and get your thoughts and opinions or questions or show ideas. There's lots of things that we want to hear from you guys. So don't be afraid to go ahead and follow the link so that you can leave us your information. So you just made me think of something. So when I'm, you know, watching to see how many downloads we have, the system Spreaker that I use, the platform that, that we use to host the show actually will show you how many downloads. And it'll actually show you what states folks are from. And I haven't checked yeah. it in a while. I'm glad you mentioned that, whatever country you're in, because I remember like the first 10 episodes or so that were downloaded, one of them was from France. And I thought, how cool is that? That yeah. again, a, a hick from Tennessee is has a podcast and somebody in France, I'm thinking, did they dial, did they get a wrong website or, <laughs> you know, what happened here that they actually listened to the show? But it is kind of cool that podcast and with the, the internet, you can hear all over the world. Yeah. Uh, back well, if there's, the, only one, yeah. if there's only one France guy that downloaded, please <laughs> go to the website and leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> in English. Leave us a message in English. Uh, the, the other thing, too, the other feature on this, too, is uh, what I would like to do, and you and I talked about this before, on the leave a message, uh, the button. You actually, mm -hmm. what, I, what I like to do is every show, someone leave a shout out to a family member. This could be a, a kid, this is one of your children. This could be a wife. This could be a husband thanking the wife. This could be a wife thanking the husband. This could be mm -hmm. one thing I did find out, and you and I talked about this before, is there's line wives, but there's a few line husbands. And I offended a couple people. I know I did by always assuming that it's a line wife. So sometimes there's line husbands. There's a couple Correct. folks that I've seen that have that have followed us on Instagram that are actually yeah. uh, some females doing the work. I, I tell you, I haven't I haven't said this, but when I came up in the trade, uh, I was an apprentice, and w there was a lady that was a was a journey woman. She was a journeyman at the time, back in the '90s. But you know, everybody was journeyman. She worked her tail off. She kept up with us. She, I mean, there was no doubt this lady could perform. She was just one of the guys. She could hold her own as good as any of us could. And mm -hmm. after you work with people for a while, you don't see male or female. You just see a team. I would greatly respect that, but it, it, was a, it was a good experience. I'm still friends with her on Facebook. She's retired now. I tell you, I remember when I was an apprentice, she gave me as much hell as anybody else. I respect <laughs> her. So her nickname was Mert. It was part of her last name. I won't mention it on here, but Mert, if you're listening, uh, you made an impact on me. So I hope, oh, I hope that's so uh, sweet. you're able to, yep, listen to the show. There was nothing oh, sweet maybe, about Mert. Maybe you should hit her up. Yeah. Maybe you should hit yeah, her up was, and see if she wants there to was do nothing a guest sweet. spot. Yeah, I might do that, but I can tell you, um, she, like I said, she held her own pretty good with the guys, and she tormented me just like they did. <laughs> Leave a shout out to family members. I apologize. I'm I, looking at my notes here. I'm, I apologize for it taking a couple weeks or three weeks actually to get the second episode up and going. I, I really wasn't planning on it. You know, here in Florida, we had a little problem called Hurricane Dorian, and I tell you, I feel like that as far as the utility business goes, I do work for a utility based here in Orlando, and I can tell you that it felt like we ran in place for two weeks and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. And we were ready, but the first one of the year seems to be always the most stressful, trying to get everything prepared and buttoned up, ready to go. Uh, I worked in transmission, transmission system, so our projects that we have take a little bit longer to get back to normal. It, it took a little while for us to get things buttoned up. I apologize for it taking a while to get this ep second episode up. Well, yeah, not only are you worried about your work responsibilities, but also 
getting ready at your house and your family, you know, and your kids and stuff. I mean, how, how are you able to divide your time <laughs> with so much responsibility going in both directions? So a couple of years ago, we had Hurricane Irma roll through here. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. tell you, it was my first experience here in Florida. We've been in Florida for five years. So it was my first experience here living in Florida. So we did the, we went and bought the gallons of water. We bought the 12 pack, 24 packs of water. I bought a propane stove. I bought propane. We bought canned foods. We did the whole thing. And we were never home. We worked the whole entire time. And at work, mm -hmm. we ended up, you know, utilities, they feed folks. We make arrangements. We have, you know, even in our shops, we have. Uh, our employees, we have grills, we have, you know, ice machines, we have, we have whatever to sustain the workforce while we're there. This time around, I didn't really buy a whole lot for home. I guess our teenagers would be at, uh, on their own at home <laughs> because we didn't really prepare <laughs> at home like we should have, I guess. That's a good reminder. I'm going to make myself a note to go buy more water. <laughs> yeah, you don't want those poor kids starving. <laughs> but, uh, we had, but, you know, here we had limit. Lim limited damage this one mm -hmm. wasn't really that bad at all I, I honestly it's uh and i know you and i've talked about this but the damage in the bahamas was just it's unbelievable it's yeah i i, I just overwhelming so sad to see the footage and see everything totally just blasted like it like a bomb went off literally and it's on the whole whole grand bahama island like that it's just awful you know what's weird is there's flights that leave out of orlando and go there for relief flights we still hear about them on the news here locally it's amazing to me how close the bahamas are i, I went on a cruise uh two three years two two years ago i guess and nassau was our last stop on the way back to miami you know it cruise ship i think it took about eight or ten hours to get back but mm -hmm. you know the bahamas if i'm not mistaken you can get to like the west west end Bahamas to like Fort Lauderdale. It's like forty miles. It's like forty five, yeah, fifty miles off co of the coast. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they're like the second closest country to the United States next to Russia. Oh, yeah. that's not touching already. Because I think Mexico's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> Where you actually have to go Canada, over the water. <laughs> and Canada and Canada, they they're closer. I think. <laughs> Shut yeah, up. I think Mexico and Canada are a little closer. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading, and it said specifically that it was 180 miles off the coast of Florida, but that it is one of the closest countries next to Russia where you have to go over the water to get to. <laughs> okay, I got smart you. ass. <laughs> <laughs> there, I made some. I have some contacts in the Bahamas. Actually, I have a few contacts through LinkedIn that actually work for Bahamas Power Company. I can't remember the name. I think it maybe BPL or something. I, I can't remember. But so I reached out to them. Uh, one of the line workers there, a uh, line technician, I think is his title. I, I was able to, you know, get in touch with him. I was trying to remember what town he was in. I, I can't remember. He was south of where the hurricane actually hit. Uh, they didn't have any damage where he was. As you can imagine, the internet and power within the islands was, was sketchy. I was going to try to do an interview with him and then, you know, maybe some folks at the utility that I had reached out to. I can imagine they they really don't have time to talk to anyone right now. Their whole system is just devastated. Where do you begin when it's something like that, when it's the whole entire island that's just totally destroyed? I mean, over 17,000 people displaced and not having anywhere to go. And then the ones that are staying on the island what are they going to do with just i mean food and water and just all the necessities just for basic life are gone and i mean relief yeah. efforts are helpful but how do you even begin to clean up such a catastrophic event i just can't it, even imagine and you know even before you start building the infrastructure back you have to clean everything up yeah you, you have know, to you clear have to, it yeah it's it's and i remember hearing stories about hurricane andrew in 92 that came across southern Florida between Miami near Homestead. And they were talking about the when the hurricane came through, it was so devastating. I think it was Cat 5 winds. I don't remember what the sustained winds were during that storm, but it was like ripping the asphalt up off the ground mm -hmm. and totally destroyed the pole line. There was no road bed. There's no road right away. No one even knew where to begin in putting up you know, a single-phase line or a three-phase line, overhead line because there was no 
you, no one knew. So they had to come in and actually survey. And, you know, back in the early 90s, uh, I don't think GPS was as prevalent as it is today. It wasn't used mm-hmm. as much. And so they, they actually had to go in and survey to where they were going to put the roads, put the power lines. And I, I just can't imagine the task. And that's on the mainland where they can load up dump trucks and take it away. You know, when they're on the island like that, what do they do? Load up the dump trucks? Uh. Like take them over on a barge and then load the barge. dump trucks up and I, dump I, the stuff on the barge. I mean, how do you even you know, begin? I guess, That's where I just I, who knows. You know, in maybe in the Bahamas. 